I'm Don Sweet, and welcome back to Crappie 101. And you know, you would never know that it's almost January because I'm here in awesome Central Florida on the Harris Chain, and I'm here today joining tournament winner and tournament champion, Denny Tittle. And Denny, I know that you've got a great game plan in store for us here today. How are we going to be going after these crappie? Well, we're going to spider rig, which is pushing our baits. And we're going to fish about five feet deep in six, seven foot of water. We're going to try to go back and forth across the ledges. And that's where the ambush points are. And I think we'll catch some fish. There's going to be a couple big ones for me. I'm hoping. Let's go get them, man. <laughs> Let's go get them. When I fish on the Harris chain, I normally use a Wally Marshall 14 foot rod light action or a B&M 14 foot light action rod. I use a, a B and M uh, Buck Mini free spool reel. I usually put eight pound test line on my reel, and then when I get down to what catches the fish, I use a six pound test tag line. Today we were using a one ounce lead, and the reason I was using that heavy of a lead is because of the wind. It keeps your poles from shaking back and forth so much and it's easier to t detect the strike. In, in real calm conditions, I'll use a lighter lead or in current, I'll use a heavier lead. And today we were using feather type jigs and jigs with uh, marli tubing and some of them with uh, crystal flash hair in it. And you can buy those a lot of places around the Harris chain and a lot of the bait shops um, and different colors are effective. Uh, pink and chartreuse is good. Pink is good. Orange is good. Chartreuse is good. Blue is good. Now the way I got these put up here, you untwist them like this. Okay. And then when you get down to the end, you just flip it out there and make sure it's loose. There you go. Out there. <laughs> See, you're still wrapped around the end. Yeah. So 12 foot is, is probably a, a good average depth if you had to pick a number. Uh, no, <laughs> probably be seven or eight feet is average eight. depth. Okay. There's a lot of 10, 12 foot water and there's you know 15 16 foot holes but like on lake beauclair the next lake over there's only three holes that i know of that are over nine or ten foot deep the rest of it's five six foot deep seven foot deep and that's all there just isn't a lot of deep water on them you know denny in a lot of lakes crappie fishermen will come in and they'll they'll introduce structure. They'll put in trees, they'll put in uh, stake beds and things of this nature. Is that what happens here on the Harris Chain of Lakes? Well, there are some brush piles on some of these lakes that people have put in, but they don't seem to hold fish a whole lot because the bait moves a lot on these lakes. So consequently, the, the crappies and, and uh, bass and, and other things move a lot too, but Generally, the holes, they are close to some of those holes. Some of those holes are, are springs, and they're close. That doesn't mean they're going to be in them. They'll be around them somewhere. Right, somewhere in the area. Usually, for, for a, a lot of different species of fish, right at the head of the front, just, just right when the barometer starts to drop, it can be some of the best fish in the... It can be. Is it the same thing here? Yeah, it, it can be. This, this is trolling. It's slow trolling, but you're pushing the bait rather than pulling it. Okay. So what you're seeing on the locator then, you haven't gotten to yet. Uh -uh. Okay. Actually, the locator is right on the bottom of my trolling motor. That's where the transducer is. And so the baits are out ahead of that. Right. So you'll actually see what the baits have already gone past. Correct. But most of the fish that you catch in here, you're not going to see. They're on the bottom. Oh, okay, okay. Is it a real subtle bite, or is it a... Uh... Sometimes it's a real light bite. Sometimes they bury your rod. Okay. <laughs> he, might just, he might just hold it, hold it down just to 
an inch lower than it, than it was. Okay. Or he, your rod could straighten. He could pick the bait up and just, just straighten your rod. And when he does that, then you pick up just a, a subtle flip of the wrist. Okay. Jerks, jerk it. Because you don't want to yank it straight up in the air. You do with that one ounce weight. And it comes down and hits you on the head. It'll hurt. <laughs> in front conditions, I catch more fish in the afternoon. Oh. As, as the temperature rises, See right there is a speed. We're going right now five tenths of a mile an hour. Okay. That's pretty much the ideal that you were talking about. You want yeah, to somewhere around five to six tenths right now. In the, in the summertime, when the there you go. Oh. You gotta give a little more wrist action. Okay, more of a pop. Yeah. As opposed to just a lift. Okay. Well, I'm over two there. More of a pop. Looks like you found a pocket of them back here. Yeah, we'll see if we can find some bigger ones. They're, they're mixed in together, I mean, you know, some big ones and the small ones. Sure. Are... One thing I tell people, when, you know, no matter what species I'm going for, there's a whole lot more small fish than there are big fish. <laughs> That's just the way life is. Well, it's a really good thing when there's small fish. That means your future sure. fishing is going to be good. Yeah. If there's no small fish, you, your lake's in trouble. Yeah. I'm always hearing people want to fish creek channels, and now it makes sense. You're talking about, you know, that's their migration highway to deeper water. And, and there's always a ledge for them to hang on. And usually in creek channels, you got good fresh water. Now here on the Harris chain, these are natural lakes, yes. right? And there's eight of them. And they all interconnect with yeah. each other. And is the is the amount of water that runs from one to another, is that controlled? Yes, uh, there's some lock systems on the, on the lake. Just fish are, are, are lock jawed, I guess a lot of people call it. Are there still techniques to be able to go and catch these fish? This is, this is probably the best one. Okay, okay. In general, what's considered deep here in the Harris chain as far as Oh, 12, 14 foot. There are 20 foot holes. There's a 32 foot hole in Harris that I know of. Uh, generally, you're not, you don't catch fish uh, that deep, not, not in the Harris, or really anywhere in Florida. In the summertime, you know, as the water temperature gets is about 90 degrees, even if you're, if you've got a 20 foot hole, there's no oxygen down there in that water. Now, Denny, the Harris chain is made up of a, quite a few lakes. Eight? Is, is that what it is? I think there's eight of them, yeah. What are the eight lakes that, that, that make up the Harris chain? Uh, you got Horseshoe, Carlton, Beauclair, Dora, Eustace, Griffin, Yale, Big Harris, and Little Harris. And I know you, I know at one time or another you probably fish all of them, but are there probably a handful of lakes that, that you like to fish more for crappie than others? Well, actually, I like Griffin and Eustace, but when the wind's blowing very hard, you can't, you can't effectively fish them. So I usually target Dora, Carl, Woo! and Beauclair. Look at this one. Hello. I'm going to get it to you eventually. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, man. Yeah, decent fish. Right on time. And the reason tournament fishermen target Beauclair, Carlton, and Dora is because of the wind. You can find places to fish out of the wind. And uh, So they're smaller lakes? They're smaller, but they have deep water in strategic locations that fish will stay around that uh, you can fish and get out of the wind to fish. And, and uh, the whole key to tournament fishing or, or pleasure fishing is being able to have boat control. And if the wind's too too strong, you don't have boat control. So if you don't have boat control, you can't control what your baits are doing. Throughout the years that you, that you fished in, I know you won a ton of tournaments and everything, and I, I know you've got a real good understanding of these lakes. From season to season, and I know down here, here it is winter and we're down here in 79 or whatever degree, but anyway, it, it is officially winter. 
Do you find that the crappie tend to, to act differently to move to different parts of these lakes? No. Actually, they're pretty much the same place year round. They do move following bait, but the, the parts of the lake that you find fish in in the winter, they're normally there in the summer. Uh, and usually close to the same depths. You, sometimes, uh, you know, when the oxygen level's right, the fish will go down to seven or eight feet or even 10 feet. But most of the year, the oxygen level's not that good down deep. So they're in the five, six foot on up. And that's where you catch your fish. In, in, in the spawning time, when the, when the crappie are actually going into the spawn, do they tend to go up in that one and two foot area? Sometimes they do. Uh, the males will spend more time up in the weeds and in the real shallow water more than the females. The oh. females will stay out. Oh! We're uh, getting into them. The females will stay out in a little bit deeper water and then they come in and spray their eggs when the males got everything ready. And I believe that they, they do that at night. That's why uh, a lot of people don't catch a lot of big fish up in the weeds but they'll catch those three quarter pound, pound fish that, that mostly are males and they're black fish. They turn really black huh. and slimy because they're getting hormonal. So early morning, late evening is probably when they're starting to move into the, to the weeds then, the females? The, I'd say the females move in there late in the afternoon or evening and come out in the mornings. Okay. So if you were trying to target the big females, you need to get there either real early in a tournament or fish deeper. No, what I do is I find out where the males are in the weeds and, and in the shallow water, and I fish out from them because I know that's where the females are going to be. Oh, so they're going to be nearby the males. So if you find the males, they're going to be close by. Yeah, they're going to be fairly close by. They're going to be out in a little bit deeper water. They don't, they don't stay up in the weeds like the males do. I'll be there. In general, do you find that the females are a little bit bigger? Yes, they, they'll weigh more. One is because they're full of roe, uh, you know, their eggs. And the, the males, as the spawning season progresses, they get thinner and thinner because they, they work so hard. Okay, and they're preparing the, the area and, and whatnot. Actually, here on the Harris Chain, the, the fish are really just now starting to put on more weight. In the summertime, the metabolism's going so fast that they have to eat so much and uh, they lose weight. So the winter time you tend to get the bigger fish? Yes. Cooler water temps? Cooler water. The fish start putting weight on probably in December, January, February. That's February and March is probably when they're the heaviest. Is that your favorite time to fish or is there a, is there a time when you get the most numbers? And... I probably catch more fish in the summertime. Really? when no one else fishes. I was just gonna say that. Everybody else thinks you don't catch crappie in the summertime. Well, me and my buddy Daryl, we, we fish them in the summer and we catch a lot of fish in the summertime. I'll be there. You know, we, we catch fish year round because we're, we're on the water a lot. Sure. But, but most fishermen uh, think there's a crappie season and that's in the winter when they're spawning. But th there isn't a crappie season. They, they're, they're out here and they eat year round. But most people don't don't fish for them. One thing is it's awful hot in the summertime. Sure. But even in the in the middle of summer, 95 degree weather, middle of the day, I come out here and just I don't know, I'll catch 50, 60 fish. <laughs> now I took Larry Stevens. Uh, it was last summer, I believe, in the middle of summer, and he he couldn't believe how many fish we caught in the middle <laughs> middle of summer and the middle of the day. It was boiling hot, but we had a lot of fun. Is it fair to say that minnow fishermen outfish just plain jig fishermen, or is that, again, depending on what's going on with the conditions? Well, I guess it's a lot like human beings. You know, it, would you rather chew on a jig, or would you want the meat? Right, right, <laughs> right. You know, that's, that's one of their natural foods is minnows. Uh, in the south, they, they eat a lot of grass shrimp, which is a little bitty shrimp that lives in the grass and stuff in, in these warm waters in Florida. So throughout your fishing here on the Harris Chain, the most effective thing that you found is 
various color jig heads, but then you'll tip them with a metal. Correct. Okay. Is that regardless of what technique you're using? I mean, even if you're trolling or pulling, you can it, still put the minnows I, on? Normally, if I pull, I don't use minnows. I, I just uh, use regular jigs. I okay. use curly tails and, and uh, Charlie Brewer sliders. And Something with some action. With action, tail action. But you're going faster. You get It's more of a reaction strike than a feeding strike. Because they don't really have a chance to, to pick up a scent. They're just reacting right. to the movement. Okay. You going to catch that one? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Swing him around here. I get him. <laughs> well, you got us up here on this ledge, and things just started happening. Yeah, they like those ledges. And they treat these there ledges as a, you were telling me earlier, an ambush point? Yes. They, they like to lay on the edge of a ledge, and, and uh, they feel safe from their predators, and they, that is an ambush po uh, spot so that they can catch their prey, minnows and small bluegills and things like that. You got a real good uh, minnow population here in the Harris Chain? Yes, real good minnow population, good min population of shad. Actually, there's too many shad, but really? they've been taking a lot of them out. But consequently, in the process of netting the shad, they kill a lot of crappie, bass, bluegill, other fish that they don't want to kill, but that happens. Uh, in Carlton. Carlton, for the size of a lake, it has more deep water than the rest of the Harris Chain. Oh, okay. It's, a, it's one of the smaller lakes. It is the smallest other than Horseshoe. But, I mean, due to the higher water temps here in the summer and the, I guess the late spring, early fall, uh, everybody's system is on overdrive. It's hard for them to pack on a lot of weight. What would you say is a good size crappie here on the Harris Chain? In the summertime? Just, just, just in general, if somebody were to say, man, you caught a one pounder, oh, that's a good fish. Oh, you got a two pounder, oh, hey, that's a good fish. On, on this chain, what do people consider a, a good size crappie? Well, a two pound fish on the Harris Chain is very rare. You don't catch a lot of them. They just, for some reason, don't get to that size. Sure. A lot of them don't. Uh, in tournaments, if you have a pound and a quarter, pound six average, you've done a you've done a good job. You're going to catch, you know, a pound and a half fish, and sometimes pound three quarter fish. But just well, two of the Crappie USA tournaments last year, I think it took a pound six average. Wow, those are pretty good crappie. They're pretty good. We haven't caught one that size today. <laughs> Any minute though. Any, Any minute. minute. A lot of times I catch my bigger fish on the turn. Because it gives it a little different movement? Yes. It, uh, well, what happens on the turn, like if you turn that way, mm -hmm. these rods almost stop and these go faster and rise. Okay. Okay. And uh, sometimes it excites them. Yeah, it's doing something different. But we may stay up from here in from now on because of how the wind's blowing. Right. To where I can control the boat better. Because you see, I keep going like I'm going eight tenths of a mile an hour. I don't want to go that fast. Right. Now, if the water temperature was in the 80s, I'd be going that fast or faster because they want to bait moving faster. When you pull, do you still pull at the 0 0.5, 0 0.6? No. I, I pull it at least one mile an hour. Oh, okay, okay. Because you're just trying to trigger that reaction bite. Yes, and less than seven or eight tenths, like on a curly tail or a, or a Charlie Brewer slider, you don't get enough tail action. And, oh. that, and that's, what you, that's what you're fishing with is tail action. You know, that, that movement, and that's what they're, the color and the movement is what they're hitting, the action. So it takes one just to get that up to a good level to where it excites them. And right. I've seen I've seen some tournament guys using two jigs as they're as they're pulling. Right. Did you ever do that? Yes. When I pull, I always use double jigs. Oh, okay, okay. When I tournament fish, when I'm pushing spider rigging, I will use two jigs. Oh, okay. And uh, still use the one ounce. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, it's according to the. Weather conditions, like I said, you know, uh, 
it's according to what kind of, you know, if it's calm, I, I may only have half ounce leads on. I have gone down to quarter ounce leads, especially if it's clearer water and, and uh, you know, you don't have a lot of wind. Because with quarter or half ounce leads, your, your poles wave a lot in the wind, like mine are waving right now. Right. Yours okay. are. Uh, that's the main reason I got one ounce leads on, so they don't wave as much. And like you can go tip. faster and and keep your baits at the depth that you want. That's the first time that, that I've been around that. I, you know, I really like that. You know, less less tip movement. You know, especially for uh, somebody like me, the rookie. You know, I'm over here looking at you know every little twitch. Hey, is that something? You know, but when you can keep them more still, you know, keeping them at that steady depth. Right. Uh, sometimes. Uh, I have used three ounce leads. Really? Yeah. Wow. Under big waves or, or whatever? Well, like in current conditions, it, like if you're fishing a river that's got current and oh, okay. you need to keep that bait there, or if you're moving fast, you're wanting to cover a lot of territory. The fish are spread out, like in classic times. Classic times, the, the fish are spread out usually, just like they are here right now. Uh, they're spread out, and you usually don't, pull up to one spot and catch a whole bunch of fish. Sometimes you do, but you're better off to cover more territory so that you can catch more of the uh, larger fish. Okay. Denny, here on the Harris chain, is there one technique that you would recommend over another for somebody who just wants to come down here and have fun catching crap? Yes. Um, spider rigging is a simple method, and um, there's a lot of people that just start that use floats when they do this. You don't have to have the expensive racks, but you, a lot of them drift. You know, go with the wind, and you're covering a lot of water. You're going to catch some fish, and for a novice, that's a pretty simple method to, to catch fish. That most people never fish it right. It's a little sandbar. It's a, it's a ridge, and it goes like this down through there. And usually when I get on it, uh, the fish are in that vicinity, you do well because I know where it's at and I work it back and forth. Good ambush point for them, mm -hmm. is that what? Yeah, because yeah, they can lay on each side of it. Okay. And you go on, you know, you go out of the deeper water on top and then down into the deeper water on the other side. It's just a little ridge and those fish, they lay, they lay on each side of it and sometimes you do really well there. Hey, the fish, Denny. Hello, look at that. Look at the size of this guy, man. <laughs> Woo! Oh, this is a bruiser, man. Bring him in. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. Look at that guy, man. A good job. Wow, <laughs> man. That's a nice one there. Yeah, that is. I'll a nice be there. And just like you said, you had just talked about moving out a little bit. Mm-hmm. Now, now, Denny. Uh-huh. That fish will weigh about pound three. Did it really only take you four years to get in this game? Come on now. Well, you're Come the one who's got the best fish. <laughs> you tell me how long does it take? He put me on his. You know, you know. We've been working this little uh, ridge back here, and, uh, and and catching fish. He says, you know, I feel like the fish have moved out. And within five minutes of him making this move, look at what we got here. Nice Florida crappie. These Harris chain crappie. You know, these are my kind of fish. <laughs> Great job, Danny. <laughs> Cut. Now, Denny, this Harris chain seems different as far as structure and whatnot. I'm used to being in some of these lakes where there's a billion sunken trees and stake beds. What are these crappie relating to here on the Harris chain? The structure in uh, the lakes on the Harris chain uh, are not like the structure in, in uh, a lot of the lakes in the Midwest where you have uh, a lot of brush and timber and stake beds and things like that. What you, what you key on in the Harris chain is holes and little ledges. It might only be a one foot drop, but those holes, what the fish do, they'll stay around them. They won't necessarily stay in them, they, but they like to be close to them for safety, for you know storms, bad weather, cold fronts, things like that. And that's what you got to key on. Now those fish, they could be in that hole, but generally they're around the hole somewhere. There's one you man, know. look at that. I tell you what, man. Another good one. Look at that one. Well, you move us out here in these big fish country now. This guy's got more moves than X-Lax, you know? Look at the size of that one. 
My good. Now these are white crappie or black crappie? They're black the crappie. House. Black crappie. Okay. There's, uh, I, to my knowledge, there is no white crappie in Florida. Okay, so they're strictly all. Oh, and another one. Look at you. Let me put this in so I can help you with that. Man, this guy's got. Look at that. I look, and bigger too. <laughs> my goodness. Well, Benny, it's hard not to be intimidated fishing against somebody like you. I mean, this guy said, hey, let's make a move, and he's on big fish all over the place. And to the novice, this just looks like a big, wide open lake. You know? <laughs> this just looks like a big old bathtub. How in the world are you going to? But he, he strategically came right in this area, and he's putting us on these big black crappie. Great job, Denny. <laughs> Back you go, bud. Now, you know why I dropped that, don't you? Wow. You this know why I dropped the marker? Why? Oh, because you, you got a couple big ones right here. Yeah, and we, we'll work in and out right in here and see if we can pick up more. Wow. Man. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Visual Films Outdoor Productions. With dozens of outdoor DVD and VHS titles available, you'll be able to learn all the top tricks and secrets that the pros use to put big fish in the boat. Giant sturgeon, goliath grouper, bass, crappie, and of course, mega-sized catfish. It's all here, and a lot more. Visit us at www.visualfilms.com. <laughs> Look at this one. Oh, man, good fish. Wow. Oh, I can't hardly get him in, Denny. Oh, oh, come to me, come to me. <laughs> Woo! Look at the size of that one, man. Wow. And you know, Benny was talking about this certain special color. Now, how would you describe that? That like a hot pink with that, a... That's a hot pink. Pink is a good color almost anywhere. But the Harris Jane, it's really good color. I make all my own baits, so... Oh, you make those? Yeah, all these baits oh, I, didn't know I made. That. Yeah. Wow. All right, Dan, we'll get him back in. Another nice one. Yeah. yeah. Well, this Harris Chain does not disappoint, man. See you, buddy. There's some pretty fish here. <laughs> and you about missed one while I was putting them back. I did miss one. <laughs> <laughs> now, Denny, under a variety of, of weather conditions, because you can never predict which way the wind's going to blow with, with certainty, are there some lakes that are better under certain wind directions? Well, at least um, some lakes you can find good areas to fish regardless of the wind. But some lakes on the Harris Chain you can't. Like um, Eustis is really hard. Uh, if you've got a north wind or, or a west wind, it's hard to fish that lake because the, the deeper water is on the east side. And consequently, it, it's tough to fish that lake. And then Harris has, it, it has some places that you can go and get out of the wind. But for the, for the most part, if you restrict yourself to Dora, Beauclair, and Carlton, you have deep water on all, from any direction the wind comes from. You have deep water that the fish can stay around, and you've got a, a fighting chance of being competitive. Now, that's not to say that all the big fish are in those lakes. That's just to say that it's easiest to fish under a variety of wind conditions. Correct. If you had to say, hey, I want to go and have my best chance at the biggest crappie, would it be some of the bigger lakes? In my opinion, it would be Griffin. That, because in six years I've lived here, I've caught six or seven two-pound crappies off the Harris chain. Five of them's come from Griffin. I'd say that's pretty good indication, right? <laughs> yeah. But Griffin is tough because the wind. It, it, can, it can kill you on that lake. It's long, drawn out. It's the largest lake on the Harris chain. I think it's 16,000 acres or something like that. Whereas this one's about 9,000 acres. But when you figure you've got Beauclair that you can just go through a little canal and you've got another 11 or 1,200 acres and then go through another little canal and you're in Carlton, which is the easiest one to fish with any wind conditions. Um, and it's another eight, 900 acres. You've got a lot of water here to fish and that's why I'd say 80 to 90% of the tournament fishermen Fish Dora, Beauclair, and Carlton for that reason. So, 
they fish it just just because of the fishability. That's not an indication really of where all the big fish are, right? No. Okay. No, because Eustace has large fish, Harris has large fish, and I think Griffin has the largest of all the Harris chain. So for, if it were a nice calm, you know, just slight breeze day, regardless of direction, you could fish Griffin and and, uh, and and have a great shot at some really big fish. Yes, you could. Yes, you could. Uh, with no cold fronts and the, and the the wind wasn't a factor, that's where I'd fish. Okay. Okay. But that's not the case in the winter. <laughs> right. You have cold front after cold front. Sometimes you'll have two cold fronts in a week. Well, that makes for a lot of wind. Sure. And you sure. know, and when you get the wind conditions, uh, that goes back to when we first started talking. Boat control is the most important thing. If you can't control your boat, you can't control your bait. And if you can't control your bait, it's hard to catch You're the bait. You're shallower now. Yeah, but I think you're gonna get, there you go. Oh, oh, look at this one, man. Oh, yeah. See, now this looks like a, a white crappie almost. I mean, it's real real light colored. Look at that. Yeah, lighter. Oh, if, if I hit you with it. <laughs> I usually fry them first. <laughs> now, look, white crappies has bars. Oh, okay. Okay, and okay. they have uh, different dorsal fin. They have more, more of these. My good, are they getting bigger? Well, we're trying to get them bigger. <laughs> That's a nice one, man. Wow. You know, this one more of these big Harris chain crappie that I thought we were gonna get all day, and it's early. My well, goodness. You're just a good fisherman. I tell you, yeah, right, man. This guy's got eagle eyes, you know. But you know. No substitute for experience. And you know, Denny's been doing this and learning it the right way, researching these you know, Harris chain lakes, knows where to fish, when to fish, understands what the fish are doing. And really the best way to do that, wouldn't you agree, Denny, is to at, at least get started, maybe going out with a guide that knows these waters. Yes, that's a, that's a good way to get started. And, and there's probably some local guides here that have been fishing here all their life that can help you learn what you need to know about these Harris chain lakes. As, as big and vast as this Harris chain is, you know, all these lakes, all these thousands of acres, it's got to be overwhelming for somebody just coming down here from out of state. Is there a guide or two, because I know there's not many, that you might be able to recommend that, that some of these people can go out with, learn a little bit about catching crappie here on the Harris chain? One guide comes to mind, Daryl Cole. He's a friend of mine. He's guided on the Harris chain most of his life. He's lived on the Harris chain all of his life. and. Uh, there's, there's just nobody that knows the waters on the Harris Chain better than Daryl does. He's out on the water a lot. And uh, for someone to come down here to lakes that they don't know and never been to, hiring someone like Daryl is uh, a really good thing to do. He, uh, he's helpful, he'll teach you, he's patient, and uh, he knows where the fish are. So it's uh, a win-win situation for anyone that that hires a, a good guy. There, there's only one other that I know of, and that's Mike Baker, and he's lived in Florida all his life also, and, and he's a good guy, and uh, he's a good teacher also. They're both tournament fishermen, so they know what they're doing, and uh, it's hard to beat people that know what they're doing. All I'm right, Denny. That other pole. Boy, he's in all kinds of lines. Oh, another big one, look at that. Wow, wow. look at the size of this him. Man, <laughs> look at the size of this one. He's all over the place. This is our biggest one. Yeah, that's pretty big. Wow, look at the size of that one, Denny. He's My goodness, good. what would you say that goes? Eight, nine pounds yet? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> close. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm gonna work on it. Maybe a pound four, pound and a quarter. Wow, that's a nice crappie. Man, and of course I missed it. Denny's got to cover, cover me here. I'm the new guy, but this is, man. The big raised forehead, that's when they start getting big. You start seeing them getting big and thick up there. there. And, they, and when they get thick across the back, that's that's when they wow. start. Nice. And then when they start bellying out, which she's starting to, she's got some eggs in her. Oh, so this is a female? Yeah. Okay, okay. Usually the bigger ones are? No, not always. But not the, always. the biggest fish, the biggest wares normally are because they have the row in them. And okay, okay. And since she doesn't have the row yet, I mean a lot of row, uh, she would just be probably maybe quarter pound heavier if she was full? Yes, if she was full, she'd probably be about a quarter pound heavier. So, so this is the one you won the tournament then, about a month from now though. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, but she'll weigh more then. We're gonna put her up and get some stills. What do you think? All right. This is a nice Harris chain crop. All right, girl. You'll be going home though. <laughs> another one, another one. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, we got in that other line. Hold him. Hold okay, him I'm still. Just hold him still. We'll see if we can unwrap him. That happens. There oh, there we go. go. There we go. Good job, man. Another good one. Well, that's all you catch, Denny. Big fish. Well, I don't like them little ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, now, this one's got some really distinct dots on it. The darker pattern as opposed to mm -hmm. those little light, those light fish, real nice dark spots. As, as the year progresses and they get closer to spawning, they'll get even darker. Oh, really? Yeah, a lot darker. In I'll fact, be they'll be, have a film on them. They'll just be slimy because that's the way males do. Giving off the hormones? Is mm -hmm. that what you were talking about earlier? Yeah. Okay, okay. Nice job. Another pretty fish. Yeah, but well, he took off big time, man. That's a good one. <laughs> Nothing but good ones. Oh, yeah. Oh, Denny. Bring him in here. That's another pretty fish. Look at there. And then this one, unlike the other one, doesn't have all the black dots. And that's because this is a sheep. Oh, a sheep. I, I knew that. I knew the that. other one was a <laughs> heat. <laughs> but she's starting to belly out. Now, you know, Denny, I'm starting to get a complex here. You know, can you imagine trying to fish against a guy like this? I mean, we're out here having fun, and he's not even, we're not in his top secret spot. We're just out in a spot that's got some fit. This guy's deadly. Now, I don't know if it's these custom lures and baits that he ties up. I don't know if it's just his years of studying these fish or whatever it is. But, Denny, I'm all discombobulated trying to compete against somebody like you. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, man, look at it. We're not even doing nothing. Look at that. Unbelievable. <laughs> Gee, man, they, how subtle they can be. They can be. Because <laughs> it was just holding it a little bit lower than the rest. Uh, yeah, and that's he all. picked up on that. You know? <laughs> I'll be done. Now, that's a good eating fish right sure there. Sure is. That, Absolutely. That fish will weigh 10, 11 ounces. That's a good eating fish. And, and, and that one is, is kind of thick and chunky, too. Yeah. Now, that particular fish, or, you know, I didn't see the bite, obviously. But <laughs> it had just held down the tip just a little bit. And the reason Denny puts these, these weights on it, and of course he's got the experience to go with it, but puts the weights on it, he wants to get all the rod tips where they're hanging at about the same kind of angle and the same distance off the, off the, off the water. And he was able to pick up that bite, and I just, I'm looking like, which pole? And he says, just lift it up, and, and there's the fish. Unbe no substitute for experience. You the man, Denny. Oh, look at you, man. Wow, you got the hot hand. Another big one. Well, you got us here in the zone, man. What color we got now? That's white. I'll be darned. A white bait. I'll be darned. Beautiful fish. Pretty fishes. I'll be darned. That's why I love crappie fishing. Well, it's getting to be brighter out, and yep. brighter colors are really coming on. Yeah, they are. Pretty fish. Another good one. Well, now, that one's starting to put on a little bit of weight. Look at that. Yeah, she is. She's starting to get chubby, isn't she? She's got that little gut going. Mm-hmm. That pretty fish. So you figure probably around uh, February, March is when they, a lot of them tend to be their biggest? Yes. Sometimes clear into April. It's according to what the winter's like. All those fronts that come through, fish will come in and get ready to spawn, you know, like in February, and then a front will come in and it'll push them back out. The males will still be there, but the females, eh, I'm not going in there. Okay. And then they'll pull back out. But the reason is, is, is the colder water, their eggs won't incubate. So they don't. They, it's, oh. a, it's an internal thing. With, with their, so they wait know. until it's warmer up in there before they go in there and put the eggs in the Correct. males fertilize them. And... I don't know how they know these things, but they do. If, if we all knew everything that fish and wildlife knew. There wouldn't be any. <laughs> there wouldn't be any. <laughs> and, and the thing is, is we probably have all those instincts. We just don't use them. Yeah, yeah, don't need to. We got, we got MTV and cable. That's right, and you know, <laughs> and computer. Because we had good fish, but we knew, knew we didn't have good enough fish to be at the top. No. Yeah, you take it. I My have. goodness. Oh, and on a green jig head this time. That, I yeah. think that's our first one. No. On a green, it, or, it's, or it's not. Uh-uh. I got I'll it. I'll be darned. Another nice one. And this Look one's got that. kind of the faint pattern of uh, 
of the dots, as mm -hmm. opposed to the real dark ones, like they'll get, what, another month or so? Mm -hmm. They'll get That'll a lot darker. Done. Yeah. You want to keep that one? Or yeah, just yeah, release that yeah. One? Yeah, we'll get some pictures of these bigger fish. Man. To me, these are... There you go. Oh, he's happy. He's happy. Well, Denny, I've been real impressed with how your lures are working. And I know that, you know, with all the thousands of different lures that you can buy out there, that uh, it probably had to be more of you trying to match what these fish are wanting. Is that what led you to wanting to do your own lures? Well, one of the reasons I wanted to do lures is, uh, one, make money when I first started making them. Two, is you get a little bit better understanding of the fish and what they want. And so you... You mix colors, you try different colors and different uh, clarity of water, you know. The, the clarity of water and the color of bait will, will change, you know, as the clarity gets denser or, or brighter or whatever, your, your bait colors sometimes change. And when you experiment with that and you make your baits and, and like hair baits or mylar baits or rubber baits, plastic baits, um, I just like to experiment and see what what the fish want in this particular type of water or color of water. Water temperature makes a difference on the color they want sometimes. Wow. Uh, there's so many things that you can learn if you just apply yourself and think about it. You know, because, you know, what's this fish thinking? What's he think this is? Yeah. You know, and yeah. so you're you're wanting to put something in front of him that is normal to him a normal food sure and sometimes that's a color variation sometimes it's a shape variation um, and it's just it's interesting to me and it's it's made me become a better fisherman because i understand more of what they want and you know i'm real impressed with the, with the with the results of that obviously but one of the things i was thinking about is do you think that there's an overall color? Because I know I go someplace they go, you can catch fish on any color as long as it's green. <laughs> you know, and here, I, you know, here you've got a variety. You know, you're probably wanting to hone in on, on certain things, or maybe it's a different color when you're shallow or deep or whatever. But is there a, a basic color group that you think is important in, in some of these various seasons here on the Harris chain? Well, on the Harris chain, generally, pinks are good. Pink. And, and most lakes I've found. Pink is a good color for crappie, uh, but just about any place in the United States, chartreuse is the main color, and that's probably the color that is used the most by most fishermen is chartreuse. Well, why would I want to use the same color as everybody else? Sure. I don't want to catch the same fish they're catching. Right. I want to catch bigger ones. Sure. So I'm going to put a different color in front of them. But pink is a good color here. Chartreuse is a good color here. Uh, white and chartreuse is a good color. Color combinations work very well on the Harris chain, as they do many lakes. Um, you know, we've got several on red and white. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I've never been an advocate of red and white, but through experimenting, I've caught a lot of fish on red and white. Sure, sure. And I notice that, that you tend to like more of the fly type as opposed to the soft plastic, or is that just the time of year that we're fishing? It's the type of fishing we're doing. Oh, okay. Sometimes I'll use plastics when I'm pushing. I always use plastic when I'm pulling. Oh, okay. Okay. Because of the action. But see, when I'm pushing spider rigging, I have a minnow on there. And I'm, I'm attracting him with flash and with the color, and he's going to eat that minnow. Sure. And now when you're pulling, going fast, ooh. <laughs> see, that face was just holding Yep, just holding it. And that's why I pulled that line to feel it. And there he was. <laughs> he was there, but he didn't want to take it. <laughs> and it, it probably takes a certain speed to get those soft plastics, the tails moving, right? Right. It, okay. You know, if you go slow, like when you slow troll, spider rig or push, a, a lot of people call it a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. If you go slow like this, you don't get the action from the tail. So okay. you need to be going faster, a mile an hour, or one, 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 two, Just somewhere in that action. neighborhood. Just for the tail action, which is what the fish are striking. Whereas with the ones that you've made here, you've got a lot of hairs and, and, and fibers and things that can just sort of ting or, you know, twitch. Right. Stuff. Denny, a lot of species, people will say, if you find the bait, you found the fish. Is, is that kind of true with crappie too? Yes. And is it the, uh, 
typical mud minnows as opposed to shiners that's predominant here on the Harris chain? Uh, well, you've got the you got the toughy mud minnow. Would it make sense to, to take a few grass shrimp with you if you're out? Yes, there's been two or three tournaments, one on the Harris chain with grass shrimp. I'll be there. Uh, now, Denny, as, as, as many options as you've got to fish, I mean, I mean, you know, you know all the different locations here on the Harris chain. Is there kind of a rule of thumb that you could give somebody? How long should you work a particular area? I mean, do you give it a certain amount of time, and if it's not producing, then go to plan, you know, the next spot, you know, site two, three, four, five. You know, what's a fair amount of time here on the Harris chain to, to give a spot a chance to produce? In a situation where you, you go to a spot that you were in the, the day before and you were catching fish, if nothing's changed, the weather hadn't changed or anything, I'd probably give it a half hour, 45 minutes. Now, if the weather's changed, I would give it longer because it's unlikely that the fish left, but they could have. And, you know, if nothing's changed and you go to the same spot, you need to at least give it a half hour, 45 minutes, see if they'll bite before moving to another spot. But if a cold front or something came in, you need to give it longer because it may be longer before they start to bite. Just to see the St. John's River, oh, see the good fish. alligators, manatees. Big fish. You know, all the things that are over there, beautiful wildlife and, and vegetation. Isn't that a pretty fish? Now, I'd say that's got to be eight, nine pounds. What do you think? Yeah, close. <laughs> really close. <laughs> now, I could be a little off in my calibrated eye, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about eight or nine pounds. <laughs> Maybe a pound three, a pound nice, four. A nice one. This is a nice berry. fish. Oh, wait. Man, this thing's active. Look at it. If this ain't a big one, this is something different. That's a nice one. Whoa, look at this. This is the fish here, buddy. <laughs> Woo! Man, how am I going to lift this thing? Just like you're dead. Wow. Look at this hog. My goodness. There's a tournament fish. Is that the fish of the day? That's the Hello. Day. Look at this guy. <laughs> My goodness. And you stuck him good. That is a tournament fish. Mm -hmm. I know you got to say it on that one. Yep, it and is. What's that famous color he had? This one was red and white. This is Denny's famous red and white. Look at the size. Yeah, pretty fish. fish. That's the fish of the day so far. So far. Great coloring on him. He doesn't have that in between. He, he's got yep. some nice dark coloring too. Yeah, she come out a little deeper water. I'll be done. All right, man. Another quality fish. Wow. Man. Big fish over here. Yeah. And look at there. It, now, is that the first one with the blue head? No. Or, or have you already got one on there? No. That's that. That's that. Florida State or Florida. Color. Oh yeah, Florida that's gator right. color. Florida gator color. Man, Blue and orange. Chunky one, man. Mm -hmm. Look how thick that one's starting but to get. We caught some bigger fish than this over there. Wow. My goodness. But we got, we got fish going on. Thank you. Now, Denny, here on the Harris chain, I know that water levels can fluctuate. Are there any uh, boat ramps or, or or boating areas that people coming from out of town or out of state should be wary of? Yes. Uh, right now, the level on the Harris chain is down about three and a half feet lower than normal. Wow. So you should use caution at every ramp because you don't know what might be submerged below the surface. Um, the only ramp that I know that, that uh, is too low for me to launch is in Traveras, which a lot of people launch there. And I know some other people that are launching there now but I have a long shaft motor on my boat and I don't want to sure I don't want to tear it up so I don't launch there but that's the only one I know of that is too low for a boat like mine to put in comfortably but as I said you got to exercise caution on any of them so anytime you're three and a half feet shallower than you're you are normally I guess you can run into some problems yeah <laughs> did it with all the great fishing we've been having today what would you say that the Harris chain what kind of ranks, in your opinion, here in Florida, as far as a crappie lake? Well, I fish the Harris chain more than anywhere else because it's closer to my home, but uh, the lakes that I have fished around central Florida and north and south Florida, I'd say it ranks probably in 
the top five uh, when you figure consistency of catching fish and size of fish. It doesn't produce the largest, but a lot of times it will produce the most. It, but there are other lakes in Central Florida that that produce a, an awful lot of fish, and uh, it's a good lake, good fishery. So on that one, I saw something there. I, I was just putting that back. Well, I set him, and you can get him. Gee, my knee! Look at there. Oh, and a big one too. Holy cow! Come on up in here. Ah! Look at that thing. <laughs> that is a Harris chain crop. Look at the size of that thing. My goodness. And you got him on the fluorescent green. I could about put my head in his mouth. <laughs> Gee, <laughs> hey, look at the size of this guy. That is a quality fish. Anywhere you go, that's a quality fish. Big Harris chain crop. I, man, this is great fishing out here with Denny. You know, and again, getting out here and, and learning, getting out with a guy that's got the experience on these bodies of water, irreplaceable. And you know, Denny has shared so many things that it, it might seem like it, it's Star Wars rocket science, but I'm sure to him at first it was too. But through researching, getting out there studying these fish, he's got their number. I, mean, I feel sorry for these guys. <laughs> Man, is that the same color again? Oh, no, pink. it's pink. Well, pink's caught a lot of fish. And as we, as we kept working the same area, sometimes we went over the same water four or five times we finally provoked them into the biting. And that sometimes that's what it takes. Persistence. Just yep. being persistent. Yep. A lot of times somebody will be in a tournament or somebody will travel a long distance just to go crappie fishing. And all of a sudden they just shut off, whether it's a cold front or whatever conditions. Is there one of those top secret Denny tricks that somebody can, can you know, maybe take out of the, the tackle bag and, uh, and actually catch you know, a couple crappie? Well, if you, if you already knew that the fish were in a particular area mm -hmm. and that happens, the most important thing to do is be persistent. Keep working the area. And, uh, you know, they, eventually they will start biting, but most people quit too soon. They, they don't give it the time that is required to catch them. Good one. And it's a hog. A hog. Look at the shoulders on that one. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Come on in. Come on in. Oosh, look at the size of this Harris chain crab. I'm gonna tell you what, you know, I was coming here expecting, look at the jaws on this guy. My goodness, get my minute back. <laughs> <laughs> this is a quality fish, I don't care where you're at. And I'm having a ball here. Denny has got the program down to a science. Here on the Harris chain, all I kept hearing, oh, they're Little fish. Have we caught a little fish? Maybe one little fish. All of them are big quality fish like this. Just just a ball to be out here with somebody that's professional and knows exactly what these fish are up to. This has been awesome. Danny, we're going to put this one down and get some pictures of him later, as big All as right. this guy is. There you go. Man. I can't if he does Good fish. Off. A big fish. Now, is this the fish of the day or not? That's a pretty good fish. That, man, that's a pretty good fish there. We've got a few about that size, but wow. that's a nice fish. On the Florida colors again. Yep. <laughs> what Florida a Gators man. colors. I wonder if that's a premonition about the bowl game coming up. I don't know. It may be. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> there he is. Big, big crop. Nice. Nice. Man, look at jaws on this thing. Dun, 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 dun. Good thing you got a big boat, man. <laughs> yeah, we just sunk it, but now it's made Gee, as many big ones as we got. Nice color on this guy, too. Yeah, it's pretty fish. Let me just lug him on into the well, then. Ugh. Yeah, Don, you know, for people that's never fished the Harris chain and they, they'd like to come and catch fish, uh, there's, there's a few places that people can go and, and, you know, not have a lot of knowledge and be able to catch fish in Lake Griffin if you fish around Pixiola Point. And uh, there's almost always fish in that vicinity and th they can catch fish there. In Lake Dora, there used to be an old canning factory in uh, Traveras and it's on the north side of the lake, uh, right behind where the canning factory was. You can come there and catch fish. Uh, in the uh, Dora Beauclair Canal. You can come there and catch fish. You know, those are places that people can come 
and that's, don't know anything about fishing and catch some at Venetian Gardens, uh, especially in the winter around Venetian Gardens in that, in that park. There's a lot of people catch fish off the bank all around that, that park. And in the winter, there's a good time to do that, clear until probably March or April. So there's places that people can come even without a boat and, and be able to come and catch fish and enjoy their day. There we go. Good job. Oh, another monster. Look at this guy. Call you Big another. Fish Denny, man. Call you Big Fish Denny. Look that, at that. That's the kind of fish you like to catch in the Harris chain. My goodness, just one after another. You know, you make it look so doggone easy. You know? It is easy. All yeah. you gotta do is get out here and do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it, it's man. Beautiful, it's a beautiful lake, beautiful weather. It's you got great. that right. On all counts, the Harris chain. <laughs> These are some of the baits that we use today that were effective. This is the Florida Gators jig, and it is a real effective jig on the Harris chain. I use it quite a bit, and, and I've won tournaments on this jig right here on the Harris chain. You know, this day had to end sometime, unfortunately, because, you know, for me, it's back to the, to the gray zone in Michigan. But I'm going to tell you what, this Harris chain is an impressive fishery, especially when I got to spend the day out here with Denny Tittle. Denny, all your experience, all your little hunches and everything surely paid off today. We got a lot of quality fish. Yeah, we did. We had a good time. We stayed in the strike zone most of the day, and you showed me how to catch them. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I really gained an appreciation for this Harris chain and, and the ability, once you've learned it, as you have, to be able to adapt to conditions, being able to move from one lake to another depending on the weather conditions. And it's only through experience and trial and error and experimentation Denny's been able to perfect this game to such an impressive level. Denny, I want to appreciate, I definitely appreciate it, and I want to thank you for having us out here. Hey, I enjoyed it. And we'll see you guys next time on Crappie 101.